Hey, welcome to Dirt Guy Drive Time. This is the show where every day is hump day and the points don't matter. Boom, bet you didn't see that coming. Hey, so, um, happy Wednesday, everyone. Or as my wife and I, Cindy Brown, we like to call it Friday Eve Eve because we like to party and get the weekend started very early. Downside of that is that means I have to work half of my weekend. That just, okay, that doesn't work. I'll get back down that. Hey, if you're looking around, you may notice, uh, not in the company truck right now. Nope. I'm in the company Kia Soul, the first company vehicle that I got. And now your first instinct is like, did it get demoted? No, I'm still the super duper intended. Um, no, here's the deal. So, um, I don't know, 45 days ago, my office sends me a recall notice for the Kia Soul that I'm presently sitting in. And, you know, as you read through the recall notice, it talks about, and your engine could blow up, and it could be a fatal something. And I'm like, what the hell? <laughs> what kind of car did you get me to drive? So I told my office, I said, I'll give you two options. One, I'll bring it to you right now, and it's your problem. I'll just drive my own truck. Or two, I'll keep it at my house and uh, take it to the dealership when they have an appointment open, which was 45 days later. This car been sitting on my driveway for 45 human days, Earth calendar days. Been sitting there. Um, so, um, tomorrow is the day of the appointment, so I was going to drop it off tonight at the dealership. Um, so I drove it to work. I'm driving it to the dealership. Well, no, I'm not. I'm driving it home because I had to work late. <laughs> so, so I get to drive this little sewing machine to work tomorrow and try to hit the dealership. I don't even know. Whatever. Anyway, that's one of my stories for today, but I got another one for you. And this one's kind of fun. Um, well, I got a good story, and then I got a... It's another story. Anyway, I like to tell stories. It's a storied show, people. Get over it. So, um, uh, there's this place at work I call The Perch. It's where I go to have a smoke. And I look down on the job site from there because it's up higher. Okay, duh. Anyway, so I'm looking down on the job site, and uh, I watch my little minions work. And uh, I feel very importante. And so while I'm there today at one point on one of my perch visits, I'm changing lanes, so don't freak out, please. Look, I still have a hand on the wheel down here. This one, what, what? Uh, watch the road. So, so as I'm standing there, the freeway's right next to the job site, and, and all of a sudden this massive dust devil comes from the field across the freeway, across the freeway, and onto my job site. Uh, it was awesome. It was huge. This big, you know, column of dirt sticking up uh, over the job site. So um, that's all fine and dandy. But then it moved on top of this concrete slab. I told you guys that we poured, right? Well, a little little background. The the guys, the, the crew that poured that slab did a terrible job. It is the ugliest piece of concrete. I've ever seen, and I've seen some ugly concrete people. I dated some ugly concrete ones, I think. I can't remember her name, though. But anyway, um, it was terrible. So they're grinding the concrete to make it smooth and pretty and uh, whatever. So there's a lot of concrete dust uh, there. Uh, by the way, that's called silica dust, and it's not a good thing, just so you know. A lot of dust there. When all of a sudden this dust devil comes across that podium deck, that concrete slab, and, and picks up that dust and gives me a, about 300 foot tall pillar of cloud if you remember your bible stories this pillar of cloud coming across the job now here's why that's just sort of I don't know I'm laughing but I'm not laughing it's a big deal to have that dust floating around um, it's kind of you can kind of get fined a lot of money for that <laughs> all right so I'm the superintendent um, and I'm watching this giant hey OSHA come find me sign <laughs> coming across the job and I'm like holy crap there's nothing I can do about it it's this big cloud and by the way if you work for OSHA right now you got to know that I'm making this up right it's not a true story okay it is a true story no really it isn't a true story and that's the true story ah, just kidding anyway so it, it goes past that concrete slab and works its way over to sort of the dirt road that leads up to me and picks up all that dirt picks up trash and it's coming right at me baby and I'm I'm gonna play chicken with a dirt devil 
Come on, bring it. Bring it, bitch. I ain't afraid of you. <laughs> I don't know. Sometimes heat stroke, you know, kicks in. I don't know. It's hump day, people. Get over it. So it's coming at me, and it's coming at me, and I suddenly realize, first of all, uh, that now it has gotten to me. And not, it wasn't picking up so much dust anymore then, but it was like jillion mile an hour winds and, tr and trash and debris, and my cigarette just launched. I don't know. Maybe that's God telling me to quit smoking. <laughs> but really, he didn't. <laughs> Maybe he did. Um, but I look around and out about 150 feet, the trees aren't rustling. The, it's calm as can be. I am standing right in the middle of a dust devil. It was amazing and it just stayed there for a while. Then I felt it move so I took a few steps and I stayed in it like walking down the parking lot. Oh, I feel like it was a, a sci-fi fantasy movie. It was awesome. By the way, if that's the high point of your day, what's the rest of the day like? I don't think I want to talk about it. So. Um, that happened, but that reminds me of another story I'll show you really real quick, and then maybe I'll hang up on you. I don't even know. Back in the day, um, I had uh, a couple of brother-in-laws who are now ex-brother-in-laws. We will refer to the first brother-in-law as brother-in-law number one. He was kind of a street-smart kind of thug kind of guy that uh, thought he was a badass, uh, but in reality, he was a little scared chicken. And then there was brother-in-law number two, uh, who I really kind of hung out with. I liked him a lot, and I wish he was still my brother-in-law in some ways. We had a really good thing going. But anyway, brother-in-law one, scared chicken. Brother-in-law two, construction worker like me. Well, we're on a job site. Actually, we're in the middle of the street doing a street crossing. And there's a trench down there, and uh, my brother-in-law number two and I are standing side by side. Brother-in-law number one is on the other side of the trench looking at us and behind him I see this massive dust devil coming across the job site and so um, I <laughs> I'm seeing it in my head that's why I'm laughing I, you probably won't think it's funny but so I pointed with great urgency and I'm like tornado <laughs> and he just took off running at cheetah speed man he was like ah, ah. He ran, all, he ran all the way to the other side of the job. Uh, anyway, it was so. We laughed so hard, we almost fell into the ditch <laughs> that was right in front of us. God, that was a funny story. That really brightens my day. Um, one, <laughs> I'm sorry, I just, I just keep picturing it. It's hysterical. Uh, <laughs> ah, tornado! You guys, if you want, if you want to hang up on me now, it's okay. I think I'm just gonna laugh for a while. Uh, anyway, shake it off. Here, hold on. Coffee break. Ah, all right. So anyway, uh, one other thing on the job today, uh, validating again my super duperness as a super duperintendent. Uh, the subcontractor I've been having a hard time with. I sent an email to my executive management team of the corporation I work for. The big cheeses. And I, and I uh, told them, I said, listen, they don't have enough guys here. They're falling behind. I can't even schedule anything because they won't hit any dates. And I'm fed up with it. Um, I'm washing my hands of it. There's nothing else I can do. I'm asking you to intervene and do what you have to do. I sent that email and I copied the executive management of the other company too. And I thought for sure uh, I might get a phone call from uh, my big boss or uh, an email or something going, dude, you need to stand down. We don't operate like that here at our company. But instead, <laughs> my boss sent an email back and copied all those same people on it and said, Steve, here's what you're gonna do. You're going to lock in the dates they need to get stuff done by, and if they don't, you are authorized to hire anybody you want at any price you want to finish their work and we'll just bill them for it. Whoa! Who gets that kind of fire support from executive management? Who gets it? I do. I, they validated the super duperness. Um, now they would have taken it back had OSHA gone. Excuse me. We'd like to talk about your dust devil. <laughs> it would have gone the other direction. Um, but anyway, that was pretty awesome to get that kind of support from the people you work for because that's pretty stressful. What I do sometimes. I'm just trying to get a bill. I'm trying to do a good job. These guys are jackholes. Anyway, hey, look, this is a vlog. I talk about what's going on in my life, 
what happened in my day stupid random thoughts that pop in there so that's what you got today and um you know i've still got oh i don't know an hour and a half before i get home but i don't think you have that kind of time so what i'll do now is i will say thank you for watching my vlog if you got some comments on that put it in the comment section if you like the video thumbs up it if you don't like somebody share it with them <laughs> that'll be a hoop and then subscribe people okay i don't know actually or don't I don't do this for views or subscriptions. I do it for therapy. So there's my rant for the day. There's my vlog for the day. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed hanging out with you. And until next time, my name is Steve Brown, and I'll talk to you later.